Hi guys, this is Donna with Love Rocks and we've got another project this week. I've decided to do something a little bit different, so bear with me here and I'll explain it. So I did a butterfly tutorial and some of the things that I've been hearing in the comments is that people love to watch the tutorials, but they don't feel like it's something that they are quite up to yet. They want something a little easier. So at the very end of this video is a, about a 10 minute, maybe 12 minute tutorial on the second rock, on an easy hiding rock. So if you don't wanna watch the whole thing, fast forward to the end and you can watch the tutorial on the hiding rock or you can watch the entire thing and you'll have two tutorials in one. So like we always say, if you subscribe and comment on this video, you'll be putting the drawing for the butterfly. The butterfly is the only rock that I'm giving away on this tutorial. So you have to subscribe and you have to comment underneath it. Okay, let's get going. So this uh, butterfly actually is pretty easy and I tried to do it super slow so that you could see each one of the steps. Please take your time and stop the video um, so that you can do it exactly the same way. I promise you, your butterfly will turn out beautiful if you do. So I had a pretty dark rock. Um, because the colors I picked out were so light, I kind of wanted to go with this darker rock. And so if you're gonna go with a dark rock, I recommend if you've got light colors that you put a white down first. It doesn't have to be super heavy. It's just a base coat so that your colors don't um, fall back into that dark rock and you don't get that vibrant color coming back out. So just put on a little coat of the white and let it dry. I do allow it to dry almost completely before I start putting in my colors. Then pick out your colors. Um, you only have to have two colors. Uh, at the end of the video, you'll see I did a whole bunch. I did a blue one, kind of an aqua, a red one, a, I did this purple one, and then I did a green one. So as long as you have two shades and the white, you're set. Put in your two different colors. So you're first gonna start out and you're gonna do the white. And you're gonna get that in, and then you're gonna start putting in the light color, and you're gonna bring that across the butterfly's wings on both the top and the bottom. Look at the picture so that you can see where those colors are coming in. On the top, you're gonna go from the mid line up. On the bottom, you're gonna go from the bottom up, not from the mid line down. You're gonna go from the bottom up. Once you get in that lighter color, you're gonna go back and you're barely gonna put in some dark color right there at the midline up and then just around the edges of the bottom up and that's where your darker color is going to come now go back in and blend that might take you a little bit of time don't get too don't get too crazy about trying to make it blend perfect because as you're putting in your lights lines with the black your those those um areas between the dark in the middle and then the white are going to automatically blend so just enjoy it take your time and do it but don't be disappointed if you don't get it to blend perfectly because i promise you it's going to turn out beautiful in the end so with this purple one i've just about got all the purple in and you'll see that I, I'm really not doing a ton of blending there. Um, I, I basically got it in and then now I'm putting in the black. So now you're gonna put in a black line straight down the middle and then crisscross it uh, the other direction. So it's gonna be a, a T or a cross. Then you're gonna put in the lines in the wings and you're gonna do them the same way on both uppers. This is the part that I say, watch it, rewind it, watch it, rewind it, pause it, and then do it on yours. I promise you, it's so easy. And what you're doing is you're just getting in the basics because you're now gonna go back in and you're gonna soften all those little curves and you're gonna fill in all the black. And 
And that one up at the very top right there that I just did, those are kind of a teardrop. I've seen them done a couple of different ways. I like them to look like a teardrop. That seems to really um, pull it out and make it very, very pretty on that black uh, background when you get all that filled in. Now, once you get those lines in, you're gonna start going back over the lines and you want to make um, a lot of dark areas, but each one of those areas, those long areas that I guess you could look at it as being a, an elongated teardrop, you're gonna make sure that it's super, super, super good, a nice clean edge all the way around. And it's okay if it wasn't the first time, just do it again. And if you need to put in a little extra black, you can, it'll look fine because that's part of your butterfly. It's part of the wing. So you can't do this wrong. I'll tell you, this, this butterfly took me uh, with, uh, from beginning to end, completed, um, took me like 25 minutes or 24 minutes. So it, it's not a long project, but oh, they turn out so pretty and people love to find these if you're gonna do a hiding pr uh, project with these. Then you're gonna go back and you're going to outline that uh, wing completely and then you're gonna fill in all the black. Now, once you get that done, you're gonna go to the second wing and you're gonna do exactly the same thing. And it feels weird when you're first doing it because you feel like, oh, I'm putting too much black on here when I'm going around the wing or I'm taking away from some of the purple because I'm going around this wing. No, it, it honestly, it will turn out beautiful by doing that. And it doesn't matter how thick of a line you get between each of those little purple elongated teardrop looking shapes because when you get done it is gorgeous it is it's going to have depth it's going to really look pretty for you once you get that filled in you're going to start with the bottom wings and you're going to do the same thing you're going to put those two lines you're gonna put a couple of rounded edges between the lines and a couple of teardrops on the bottom. Now, if you don't wanna do teardrops, you can always do circles. You can do, you can do anything you want with these. You can, you can play around with them, do a couple of them and just experiment. I like the teardrop look. Then it's exactly the same process. You're gonna go in and you're gonna outline each one of them, make sure that you have nice clean lines, nice curvature to the ends of them, and then um, fill in all of the rest of the black. Once you get done, you're going to put the body of the butterfly right down the middle. And I usually put just a tiny bit of highlight across his back. This was not to meant to be um, a super difficult one. So uh, I didn't do a bunch of shading so that it shadowed underneath. I didn't shade all the edges of its, um, of its uh, wings or anything like that. I wanted to give you guys something that anybody can do, anybody can follow. We'll do some more of those harder ones later. But right now I just really wanna get some good um, early beginner or intermediate type paintings out there so you guys can start doing stuff and feeling really good about it. Make sure you outline all of your wings with the black before you start filling it all in. And then you are going to start putting a couple of little colors up there on the top of the wing. You're just gonna add whatever colors you want. Um, I added the darker purple and then the lighter purple to it. 
Now, if you do get the black in a spot that you don't want, you can always dip your pen, your line pen, in the color that's in that particular area, and you can thin out that black line. Let everything dry really good first, and then do it, or you'll smear the black. Otherwise, you should be able to go in and you can touch it up any any time. Once you've got everything kind of painted in the way you want, go back and hit any of the lines that you feel are not quite as uh, as nice and smooth as you as you'd like for them to be. Now, now that you're to this point, we're gonna put the little antennas on. You're gonna use your lining brush. This is a black rock. So I actually did it in gray first and then put an even thinner line of black over the top of it the second time. It helped to stand out against that black rock. Make sure you got the body just the way you want it. Put a little highlight on it. And now we're gonna start doing the dotting. Um, I used a really, really small, not my smallest, but the next to my smallest dotting tool to put the dots on. And I just used white. You can use white, the light purple, you can use any color you wanted. Add a few dots around there. and you have a beautiful butterfly. Look at those. You can do any color that you want. Now here comes the bonus. We're gonna do this hiding rock for Memorial. Um, you can always add something to this. Uh, you can add lettering such as freedom or thank you for your service. You can add anything. So we, again, we've got a really dark rock. So we'll put in our heart. I got this one a little bit off kilter, so I had to do it a couple of times and erase the lines. But again, if I'm using a dark rock, you have to lay in that white underneath or you're not going to get, your colors aren't gonna come back out. Um, if you put red on this dark rock, it comes out almost a, a deep, deep wine maroon color. Blue comes out a purple black color so you want to put that white underneath so that you can get the true color that you're looking for in um you know to uh, to look like the american flag okay there's the sketch super easy okay now we're going to give it a quick little white undercoat you ought to be able to do these in just a few minutes the hardest part is getting the heart on there just right you can use a stencil. I know there's a ton of stencils out there. Um, you could do this in a star. You could do this in any shape that you wanted. Matter of fact, I might do some stars. Now, let it dry. I'm telling you, when you put the white down first, you have to let it dry. Um, or it will mix with the color you're putting in and then you're going to wind up fading your colors and that's not what you want on this one. Also, uh, because I put the white underneath, I'm going to have to do two coats of the blue and two coats of the red. It's the only way to get it uh, dark enough that it covers up the white. But I'm telling you, I've put these colors on these dark rocks. It does not work. You will be very, very... Um, unsatisfied with it. It comes out all these weird colors. But you can try it if you'd like. I'm telling you, it just it's not favorable. <laughs> 
The other thing is, um, I did, oh, like three rocks at one time because I, I would put the color on, set it aside and do another one, set that one aside, do the other one, set that aside, and then go back to the first one. That allowed some dry time because you do need some dry time in between um, all those coats. Okay, there's the first set of coats. Now we're gonna go back in and we're gonna put the second set. And you can really tell on this second set of, of color, it starts to get a nice, deep, consistent color all the way across and looks good. Some of these rocks, when I do them like this, um, where there is, it does need some dry time, um, I'll do consistently four or five at a time. It just, it makes it easier. I, I don't get very much time to sit down and paint. So when I do, I want to use up that time. I don't want to be sitting there waiting for something to dry. I want to be doing something during that time. I also have other things sitting on my desk. I've got a couple of little, little spring bugs that I've been doing for hiding rocks. I've got those on my desk right now too. And I've been playing around with a seahorse. Um, I'll probably do a seahorse here in the next two or three weeks. I, I want to, I've never done one before. It was pretty difficult on my level. So I, I want to play with it a little bit and see if I can come up with something that's not quite so difficult so that you guys can enjoy it. So it would probably turn out to be more of like a cartoon type seahorse instead of a live seahorse when I get done. The object here isn't to show you what I can master and what I can't master. The object here is to show you how well you can do it and how easy it'll be for you to do it um, and to show you the little tricks to use to be able to do it. Now we're going to put in our lines. Okay, you cannot have a shaky hand for this. So whatever you have to do, cut the caffeine, drink the caffeine, whatever it is that helps you, you have to, you have to really go slow with these. Um, for me, for lines, um, I tend to turn the rock, leave my, my um, brush in place. I move it a tiny bit, but I tend to turn the rock with my other hand and that seems to keep the line straighter. And then instead of doing stars, because I mean, that's, this is a very tiny rock. This rock is about the size of a half dollar. So um, instead of doing some, you know, pointed little stars, I just use my dotting tool and put in the little dots. And again, remember, these are hiding rocks. These are fun hiding rocks for the holiday. Matter of fact, I'm probably gonna do at least another 10 or 15 so I can get them out and hide them. Um, we've got a couple of uh, long road trips coming up, so I've gotta get some rocks built back up. And then we're gonna outline the entire thing with a little dab of white. For me to make a really nice, thin, straight line, um, it is more comfortable to pull the paint towards me. So that's why I turn my rock so much. Um, in order to make that nice, thin line, I pull the, I pull the paintbrush towards me and it seems to give me a better flow. Trying to go away from me or to the side gives you kind of a stutter step when you're doing it, but if you pull it straight towards you, you get a much softer, much straighter, thin, um, a delicate line like you're looking for. And there you go. Okay, guys, there they are. I really, really hope that you guys enjoyed this. Let me know in the comments what you think about having the bonus 
tutorial. Talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.